Hi guys, I have property investor today. Do you think that buying within one kilometer of a top primary school is a good investment strategy? Do you know that it was reported in Spring's Times that a certain area near a top primary school in Singapore actually appreciated more than 50% in just one year? And I am very shocked by that. So in this video, we're going to find out that is that really a true phenomenon? That buying near a good school will allow a lot of capital appreciation. So let's go and find out. Let's go. Alright, so the article that we're going to talk about today is actually published on August 13, 2023. So this article actually talks about the pursuit of property near popular schools actually keep stuck. Right, so the article actually says that, you know, properties that are near good primary schools are actually seen to appreciate a lot. So I'm going to talk a little bit deeper about this article because this year in 2023, the most subscribed primary school is in the West. And the primary school is named Princess Elizabeth Primary School. So just to let you know, right, I'm actually from that primary school. So when I heard that, Princess Elizabeth Primary School is the most overly subscribed school in the West or even in Singapore, I was very shocked because I didn't know that primary school is so good, right? But let's talk a little bit about this article first, okay? So you can see that this is an article again published slightly earlier. So the primary school registration exercise has already been completed. So this article is published on 4th of August. Right, and you can see that it reaches the government from the school, and for the phase 2C, there were 249 applicants vying for only 48 spots. Wow, <laughs> I'm so I'm happy lah. I mean, I'm alumni there, so at least I know that my my primary school have a good primary school. So it's very nice to hear this, right? But that's not about whether buying a property right near a primary school like Princess Elizabeth Primary School will really lead to capital appreciation. So let's find out if that will happen, shall we? Let's go. Okay, so uh, this is an excerpt for an article from the article that's published on 13 August. So what Spritz Time reported was that, we can see over here, the median condo resale price within one kilometer of Princess Elizabeth Primary School climbed the steepers by 51.5% from $1,041 per square feet in the second quarter of 2022 last year to $1,507 per square feet in the second quarter of 2023, outpacing District 23, so Princess Elizabeth is located in the Bukit Batu area, that falls in District 23, and the average uh, appreciation during that time for all the other condos is only 14.9%. When I first read this, right, I was very, very shocked because 51.5% in one year for condominium, right, I've never heard of this kind of figures before in my life. Like, you know, so for example, if I buy a condominium that's $1.5 million in 2022, near Princess Legal Primary School, are you telling me that right now that, that a capital appreciation I will look is about 750 k Wow. Very, very scary. So even in the same article, they talk about Rosai School. So Rosai School actually climbed by 19.2%, faster than the average of 9.7% in this 19. Wow. So I, it made me very, very curious because I've never ever thought that buying a primary school, buying near a good primary school has such a big impact on the capital appreciation of properties. So I, when the moment I read this, I said, no way, I need to find out a little bit more. So in this video, I'm going to help you cover whether it's a true phenomenon or space life is just misreporting. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, so before I go there, right, I also want to talk a little bit about the uh, for those who are not very familiar with the primary school registration and how does it work. Okay, so for primary school registration, right, there are a few phases. So the, the one we do talk about right now is phase one, right? So phase one is for uh, if you have a brother or sister who is already studying in the primary school already, right? So if you are in phase one, more or less, you are almost guaranteed a place in the primary school, lah, right? So for after that, right, it will be go on phase 2A. So the primary school registration will be done in different phases, right? So for phase 2A is for if you have a parent or sibling who is a former student of the primary school, means alumni over there, then you are currently entering into the phase 2A. Then thereafter, you will be phase 2B. So 2B, if let's say your parent, you know, 
hard working enough to do volunteer work for the school for at least for eight hours, or if you are endorsed by an uh, active community leader. So, for example, if you are endorsed by somebody with a Christian in a Christian school, then you will be endorsed under phase 2B and you enter via phase 2B. So, the last phase I'll talk about is phase 2C over here. So, this is something that changed last year in 2022. So, what the MOE, right, the Ministry of Education actually does is increase the number of places of students in the phase 2C that will enter school. But so previously, it was only 20 vacancies, and now it has doubled to 40 vacancies. And this has a very big impact for parents. And why do I say that? Because if you double the rigor of the places from 20 to 40, it means that if you are staying within one kilometer of a very good primary school, you have a much bigger chance today as compared to two years ago to enter in the school. Because two years ago, you only have 20 places for phase 2C, but right now the places have been doubled to 40 places. So I'm going to talk about this also in a short while because what I understand from phase 2 3 is by priority basis. So if your kid is actually entering via the phase 2 3, they will give priority to people who are staying within one kilometer of that primary school first. It's not a balloting process anymore. So for example, that for example like a princess eligible primary school. So if you enter princess eligible primary school in phase 2 3 and if you are staying within one kilometer, you will automatically have a priority over those who stay within one or, or two, two, two kilometers or even further than two kilometers away. Right. So again, phase 2 C supplementary is for those who have not managed to apply after all these phases and they have a last final chance. Okay, so this is something that I just want to let you know uh, in terms of the primary school registration. And I think that when MOE increased the places of phase 2 C from 20 to 40 slots, and that's why parents are so, so careful in getting a place in a good primary school because today we have a much higher chance as compared to 20, 21 and before because these changes are only implemented from what I know in 2022. Okay, so the next thing I'll talk about like, is, of course, look at, uh, for, give you a better example. Like. So I actually went to, hey, I'm not a parent myself, so uh, I, I'm not very familiar with this education space, but I did a bit of homework and I went to different forums. I know there are forums like Yahoo yeah, Parents, you know. So I went to this website called schoolbell.sg, and based on the mainstream primary school, right, Peihua is ranked number one in Singapore. Okay, so I went to another website called sgschooling.com. So this actually shows uh, this year's uh, placement results, right? So for Peihua Presbyterian, I can understand why the Reserve Residences is so popular already. Because today, right, you know, for Reserve Residences, right, why it sells so well is other than the beauty world transformation, you are also looking at Peihua is within one kilometer of that new development. So just to break down the different figures of you, for phase one vacancy, right, you have about 164 places, and there'll be 112 applicants. So whoever applied in phase one, who have a sibling currently in the school, will automatically be enrolled into pay one breakfast parent, right? But for phase two A, for those who parents or siblings are former alumni, there were only 62 vacancy and were 93 applicants. Means there were people, even though you are alumni of the primary school, you might not necessarily get a place there as well. So to be a lot of people who are endorsed and parents who do volunteer work again, there are only vac with vacancies for phase 2B and there are 32 applicants. So there will be 12 students who did not manage to meet the phase under phase 2B. And finally for phase 2C, there are 40 vacancies, the requirement for MOE for each school, and there are 75 applicants. Right, so from 75 applicants and only 40 people that get in. So from this, I can really, really understand why parents are so careful in buying a condominium within one kilometer of a good primary school. Because if you are applying under phase 2C for a very good school like Peihua, and you are not within one kilometer, for example, you are only staying within one to two kilometers of the primary school, it's very likely that you will not be able to get a placement at all. Right, because for phase 2C, they will actually be ranking those who are staying within one kilometer first before they go by one to two kilometers and after that outside of two kilometers. Right, so for example, if you take a new energy, you lost the video. So the, the video, there are a few blocks that are actually one kilometer from Peihua Bachelor and some other blocks that are not. So the blocks that are near Peihua are actually taken out first. 
for even on the ground when I hear a lot of parents, you know, they are buying within one kilometer of a good primary school. But today we have to look at number objectively, right? How all these are here, okay? And I want to know that really, man, you know, if I buy within a good primary school, we might probably have a pretty 50% in just one year. Wow, that's very, very scary, leh. So I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper look. So let's go and find out. Okay, so let's take into account Princess Elizabeth Primary School, right? So within one kilometer of Princess Elizabeth Primary School, there are four developments. So these four developments, the Mayfair, Park Oasis, the Jet, and the Quest. Right, so the Mayfair and the Park Oasis are pretty old developments. So the Mayfair has a T.O.P. in the year 2000, and Park Oasis T.O.P. as old as 1994. So the JIT, I believe, was somewhere in the early 2000s as well, the 2008, and the Quest T.O.P. recently in just 2020. So these are the charts that are plotted from the Inaiko researcher too. So I guess the Quest actually appreciate the most at 13.33%. Then followed by the JIT. The JIT is located very near West Mall, and in fact, it's just in front of Abuge Bato MRT. He appreciated... 11.43% from one year ago. Then of course, we look at Park Oasis and uh, the Mayfair, they didn't do very well. In fact, they only appreciated 3.26% and uh, the Mayfair appreciated 5.22%. So if we pack it to the medium price of the week where we Princess Elizabeth Primary School is located at, we are saying that the price of this district only appreciated 5.51%. So this is something that uh, let me be very, very curious. Why? Because it was reported that schools within one kilometer of Princess Elizabeth appreciated 51.5% within one year. So how do Switzerland get this figure? Because when I look at the four condominiums over here, they did not show anything close to 51.5%. So I was very, very, very shocked. And even... Uh, if we compare the schools within one kilometer, the four condominiums within one kilometer of Princess Legal Primary School, not all of them actually outperform District 23. In fact, only the Quest and the Jade, right? 13% and 11% outperform the median average of appreciation in District 23. In fact, older developments like Mayfair Park Oasis, they did worse than the condos that appreciated by 5.5%. So from what I see in Princess Elizabeth Primary School, there is really no correlation of recent photos of anyone in the of a popular school having appreciated faster than the rest of the condo counterparts in the same area. Right. So even I went to have a deeper look, right, you can see that I think another comparison. So I'm going to compare two developments. One is the jet. So the jet is within one kilometer of Princess Elizabeth Primary School and the deal, right? So the deal is at, uh, although it's also in District 23, it's also in Bukit Bato, but it's not within one kilometer of Princess Elizabeth Primary School, right? So you can see that throughout the years, right, the deal was actually appreciated by 194.91%, but the jet only appreciated at 144%. So there is really no correlation to show that, you know, if buying a recent condo near a popular school or highly demanded school will show higher appreciation even over the years. But then again, the deal is uh, launched, at a, launched as an executive condominium. So of course, it has a lower entry price, right? Then it might explain the higher capital appreciation. But the deal is not within uh, one kilometer of PPS, but the jet is actually within one kilometer of PPS. So again, from this example, we really don't find any correlation of having a good school nearby and having good condo appreciation within one kilometer of a good school, right? So although I know that you guys probably here on the ground, parents how do you pay extra to be in a good condominium near a good school, but based on data, we really don't see that happening, la, right? Maybe for new lodgers, you know, in terms of buying like uh, new lodgers within a good school, maybe there might be a, a difference in the demand, but for racial condos, not, not at all, right? So uh, I'm going to take the next example. So again, I go and compare condominiums within Rosai School against uh, the rest of District 19. So Rosai School is at uh, Sharagun North, it's currently located in District 19. So yeah, actually, in fact, I mean, this chart right, actually shows that, you know, condos near Rosai School actually appreciated by 161% from 2008 till date, whereas District 19 only appreciated by 150%. 
So it's not really true that buying within one kilometer of Roshai is a good school, while the top ramen school in Singapore allow better capital appreciation, right? So I went to look even deeper, right? So if I screw the data to U008 to U022, you can see that the condominium near Rose High School only appreciated 115% in the same period of time, but D19, the street 19 property has really appreciated 134%. So why does 2023 show such a big difference in data? So why 2023 is such a unique year that why can Hondo suddenly appreciated so much near good schools. Is it, could it be because the government, the MOE, increased the phase 2 C from 20 to 40 vacancies? That's why the parents are more demanding in buying a condo within a, within one kilometer of a good school. But I actually look a bit deeper and I finally found the answer. So the answer is this, right? So what actually pushed up the prices? In that area, for example, for Princess Legal Primary School, is basically the Quest. Because the Quest has really TOP in late 2020, 2021. So right now, they are the newest condo within one kilometer of Princess Legal Primary School. And before the Quest TOP, the, the condo within one kilometer of Princess Legal Primary School, they are all very old condos and they have been there for quite a while. So today, the Quest actually are selling at one thousand six hundred dollars per square feet on average, and it pushed the whole area of the resale prices up by a lot. And that is why the business might have reported that, you know, within one kilometer, they see a big jump in terms of the price. But that's not because of the school. That's because there's a newly TOP project called the Quest. Again, if we look at Rosai, it's because of the garden residences and affinity as a right? So affinity as a regular has recently just DOP and there has been a lot of sub sales already. So 57. And of course, because they are so new projects, they are already trying to get in an average of $1,009 per square feet, even $2,000 per square feet already. Of course, of the retail prices of within one kilometer of that primary school will be pushed up, right? But if we look at the data objectively over the years, over the last 15 years, we can see that Condominiums near a good school does not affect the capital appreciation at all. More importantly, what that means the capital appreciation up to today will be the right entry price. And of course, buying a condominium, you have to follow the resale buyer framework, right? Have to follow the resale price gap analysis. So for me, we have all this data ready for you. So if you are actually the buyer or an investor looking to buy a property for investment or even for own state, and you want to know which is the other value development right now in Singapore, we do have a formula and a framework to help you understand where should you buy and what should you not buy and if I were to be a layman buyer and you know I would just read the space time I would think that wow buying a near within one kilometer of a good primary school is very important but in fact it's not the case because if you read into the data deeper it shows that there's absolutely no correlation Okay, so I've come to the end of my video. I hope this video has value added to you in one way or another. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me on information down below. If not, I'll see you in the next one. Do take care and bye-bye.